Hello, this is Tom Sykes from Sporting Gun Magazine. This month's video we're doing about duck calling. Down on the duck pond today, I've got Goose and Joey. I'm going to do some uh, dummy work around some decoys. And I thought whilst I'm down here, I'll run through how to use a typical mallard call. So the first thing with any calling is to work out how to hold the call for each individual person and the basics that you have to grasp before you'll make a decent duck sound so to start with it's all about how to hold the call if you can't hold the call properly you can't blow into it properly so you take your take your hand in a C shape you place the exhaust of the call in between your thumb and your index finger hold the call like so and then you can cup your lips you cup your fingers around but leave a gap it's very important to leave a gap because if you close your hand <coughs> you just choke the call off so there's all different ways once you've cupped your hand as to what you do with your fingers now there's um, my typical way is I took my two fingers up and I use my uh, index finger and middle finger to control the airflow and these basically act like the duck's bill so once I've got my call it's slightly if you can see by that my hands offset slightly from the, where the call is so that the air can get out just past my uh, ring finger and straight out that way so that's how I do it and then you can <coughs> now other people have it a bit more straight like so and they use the three end fingers to act as a bill and open up <coughs> Now this is all down to personal preference, what you find more comfortable and how you get the best sound. So play around with all of these and then go from there. Another handy tip is if you, especially for beginners or even if you're advanced, if you can do it in one hand, learn how to do it in the other. See now this comes more important when you're out on the marsh or out on a, in a blind on a duck pond or all these different places because I normally call my ducks one-handed because I've got my gun in the other hand so I can hold the forend and call with my right hand or I can hold the pistol grip and call with my left hand so either way or just depends on what you're doing whichever hand gets to the call first you can just pick it up and away you go with it so anyway we'll continue so you you learn how to hold the call uh, with your hand now you need to learn how to put your lips on the mouthpiece to get the right connection to get the right airflow through so most of these uh, most people do it the same way you want your your bottom lip to go rest underneath and your top lip to go against like so <coughs> now you, the your lips sort of almost cup round and seal off all this to help keep the pressure up and um, what you don't want when you're doing a lot of calling is you get the uh, the bottom lip syndrome where the bottom lip comes on and off and it doesn't help create the pressure <coughs> You don't want that you want your lips to stay on there and almost solid and don't puff your cheeks out so it's <coughs> not <coughs> and we'll go on to this in a second when we talk about air pressure so once you've got your lips on you've got your hand on you've got a little bit of an idea what you're doing with your fingers you can move on to getting the right airflow out of your call so the airflow and the pressure is uh, determined by a couple of different factors you need the pressure from your diaphragm you need your throat uh, that also helps with adding a bit of growling and one thing and another and your tongue which is like the valve which lets the pressure there out so this is where we move on to the different words or sort of reference words that people use when trying to teach someone how to use a call we'll run through those but I'll explain the, the theory behind the, the words so the duck commander Phil Robertson his uh, reference word is 10 or with a southern accent it's teen and he says teen 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 now this is uh, importantly because of the T and now the a lot of the English uh, lads will say quit 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 and again the same with the T sound now what the T does is when you say T your tongue has to hit the roof of your mouth which creates the pressure and T as a letter is a T T T it's got the pressure behind it rather than a O O O, where it hasn't got the pressure. So, the understanding of you, you need to understand the reference words to get the call to work. A lot of people you say to them, say quit down it, and they will just say quit and work out why it doesn't make a sound. So, it's all a case of 
when you go to make that first quack sound is you get your pressure inside you get your throat clear to let the air through and then you go like you're sort of releasing the uh, the gas on a on a valve and it's that sound so it's and then you finish it with the t which gets your pressure so so without that it's So you can hear it in the back of the call as well and you can you can almost hear that at the end it's so once you've mastered making that noise so it's just a simple then you can get your simple quack sound as you do the sound you sort of open your fingers up like a duck would with its bill to let the air out and it also finishes the note off so so once you've mastered how to to do any quack sound you then experiment with pressure see that quack I'm doing a bit of a and a bit of a growl it's uh, quite a hard it's almost vibrating your throat as you say which makes that quite a rough sounding so you can experiment with this and instead of just do it work on your different pressures and you'll see you'll get a different pitch and it's all the understanding it's, it's basically this is a musical instrument and you have to work out how to make the different notes and the different pitches so once you can do your throaty quack do a higher pitched one and you can work your way around and just play on different scales and and then you have a varied quack so once you've mastered the quack uh, which is sort of your lonesome hen which you can use it as a bit of a confidence booster with ducks as they're coming around just that <coughs> but the basic of learning how to do a quack is to progress to a hail call now the hail call is what you hear ducks doing from distance you hear them on on ponds it's the call that i replicate on the marsh because it gets the, their attention from a great distance now this is a series of quacks starting with a high note and working the way down the scale as it works down the scale the the note shortens so you'll uh, for an example this is what it should sound like so as you hear it's a sort of and the note shortens and it's so it, it goes down the scale so this is just using the same principle and a series of quacks so without blowing into the call it's a and as you see the, the chest sort of drops as you go down because you still got that you need the pressure but you don't need as much pressure as you get down the scale which helps the note sort of go down and then as you get towards the end instead of a long you sort of just shorten that to and it's all about practice so you can make that quack once you've learned how to do your pressure you can make that single quack as long as you want and it's like the American duck calling competition. But we're not concentrating on that, we just want to get a typical mallard sound, which is a so the lower end of the scale. And then you can once again, once you've mastered how to do your hail call, you can practice and, and play with the different tones. So you can go from a so sort of, almost make it sound like two ducks and you again just experiment with it play listen to ducks get an idea for what they sound like and go from there so moving on from the hail call you go to the feed chatter so if the hail calls what I do on the marsh to get their attention the feed chatter is almost to finish it and to get them right into the decoys it's a good confidence booster you use it on flight ponds and you can use it on the marsh once you've got their attention now that the feed call is a series of ticks ticks and tacks and and tickers so all you're doing to the call is same again it's just a so and this is again where the fingers come in hopefully i'll be able to show you this and it you can change the pitch of the note by the fingers so without moving my hand just a simple tick 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 now if i open and close these fingers you get a change in the tone 
So once you've mastered how to do a tick 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 tick, which is like a single mallard just feeding away, you can advance that to sound like more ducks, and this is where the, the ticker comes in. So the, the tick with the A on the end, the ticker, it sort of helps you to keep your tongue rolling. So it's a ticker, 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 ticker. Almost like an engine ticking over. So once you've mastered that again, you move your fingers and you go from the, the ticker, ticker to the tick, 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 and so on and so forth until you get a bit of a natural sounding call. Now once you've got that, to make it a fuller sound you can add the single quacks in as well so you can do this in two different ways you either keep the tickers going and then you do a in between so but that is almost quite hard to explain without you doing it um, you have to almost break what you're doing with your tongue with the tickers to get the which what I found is to do a ticker 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 and then just let a bit more air out and it almost gives the realistic sort of squeak of a hen when she's feeding and does a sort of single quack so so again you just roll on with these things and you keep practicing to get the sound right so once you've done that you can also add in the odd hail call as well so the whole thing once you've learned how to do everything uh, which you don't necessarily once you progress so you know everything you do it all in one hit but to, to make a natural sounding pond as you can imagine we've got a few decoys out here for dog training in a second but if you can imagine this place full of ducks it would hopefully sound something like this So it's trying to sound as natural as you can because just because you can blow one of these doesn't necessarily mean you know when to use it and that is what everybody's ongoing learning all the time with duck calls I find it is once you once you can blow a call like a duck and um, you don't really disturb ducks from coming in now obviously if you've got ducks in the and they're committed and you hit them with a really loud hail call you might make them think well, something's not right here but if you if I sit here tonight and watch the ducks come back in, they, they, they are constantly chattering, quacking and making a noise. So any bit of sound like that is a real confidence booster to ducks. But it's just a case of listening, getting an idea for it and just practice and just see what works. Like I say, it's not very often you'll scare a duck from coming in just from calling. Now sometimes with geese and things like that, it's, it's a bit of a different story. But next month's video is all about goose calling, so we'll go into that in that video so there you have it so there's your basic um, rules to, to bear in mind when you learn how to duck call it's all about how you place it in your hand how you put your uh, mouth on the mouthpiece it's all about the pressure from your diaphragm your throat and your tongue and practice and just once you get that it's one of those real satisfying things and it's one of the one of those skills that once you crack it that is the key to it you need to sort of play around and play around until you get it right and once you get it right it's almost like clutch control with a car once you master it you'll think it's really easy and why were you struggling in the first place so get out there get practicing keep your pressure on and hopefully get some ducks in range so i've now got a uh, young goose with me and i've got joey and i'm going to do some quick water retrieves uh, mainly teaching goose not to pick up duck decoys so when he gets older and he gets in the marsh hence why we've got the old labrador so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next month